Hi guys, my name's Tim. I'm a 3D character artist. And I'm going to be showing you a tutorial for rigging for people who don't want to be riggers. Many of you make really cool characters, but don't necessarily have the skills to make them animate. So here I am here to teach you this amazing Art V1 plugin. This is developed by Unreal and really goes a long way to get characters into video games or get them rigged for film pretty quickly here. I'm not going to go through how to install the plugin as there's a really great list and tutorial on this subject on Unreal's YouTube webpage, which I will leave a link at the end of this video. So you're starting in a completely blank scene. I know some of you might already have characters made, but I'm going to show you how you would develop a character from the beginning with the Art Brute V1 plugin. So just click on the plugin tab menu and go to Character Rig Creator. So the first thing you're going to notice is it changes your world, world up from Y, which is standard, to when you click the button, changes to Z. Now that's going to change your camera quite substantially. So the first thing you want to do once you've changed into Z up is click on View predefined bookmarks perspective. This is a really great option that I recommend everyone get used to. View predefined bookmarks perspective. It just makes sure that there's no weirdness in your camera and that it rotates properly and does everything that you want it to. So now that we've clicked on that option and got Art V1 plugin open, you'll see all these initially very confusing options that they give you down here. This is just to set up your skeleton, how many spine bones, neck bones, and all your options for your arms and legs. There's even really cool options to add jiggle bones, clothing bones, or like little accessories hang from belts and stuff like that. So if you're really invested in rigging, I would definitely dive deeper into all of the options that you have on this page. But for character artists that just want to work really quickly and get stuff done, the only options that I would have you change on this menu is to include the ball joint. That's going to help you later on when you need to rig, rig your feet so that they perform properly. And then you can click same as left leg and it will auto tick that include ball joint as well. So we have our standard biped here with ball joints on both feet, three neck spine bones and two neck bones. You can really change those to whatever you'd like though. You also have the option to save and load templates based on what you, the options you change here. So let's go ahead and click Skeleton Placement. It's going to ask you if you are sure, which we are, and there we go. We got our first character. And it does look like the ca camera is a little bit weird again. So let's go to Predefined Bookmarks Perspective. Perfect. So now we're all centered, and it's the camera that you usually come to expect. So the character that we have here is pretty basic, but it's going to get you started with a little bit of geometry and all the basic basis for all the controls that it's going to build for us. So this area is the one where you're going to do most of your work. Coming down from the top we have the same template save and load option that we have on the other screen. You have options to mirror any changes that you make left and right. Uh, that's a reset button, be careful with that one. And then we have our three main options here. The G is the global mover controls that's going to allow you to move, say, like an entire arm at one point if you want the arms really wide apart. The O just moves individual sections, which just can be really cool as well. Notice that all of your controls are available here, so you can make pretty wild proportions if you want. The last option on here is the M, which is just controlling this proxy geometry that they've made for us. So you notice if we drag the arm way out of proportion here and then go back to our global mover options, you can see that the controls for the arm will still be built in the original position. So let's go ahead and undo that. So really the feature that grabbed me the most right off the bat was the physique options available to you off the start. These are really awesome for letting you get started making your character. You can do really wild things, making them square heads or that. But mostly it shines in just making sure that you get body in the place that you want it to be. So it's pretty advanced. You've got all kinds of different options that you can adjust to make the perfect 
character that you want. Mind you, these are just proxy geometry. You can always go back and replace it with whatever you end up making. I just like this for making initial tools in ZBrush or whatever program you might be building your character in. So why don't I show you an example of what you can build with the tools here. So I have made a template for Toon Teen Girl. And you notice that, oh, didn't. Here. Reset everything. And load my template. So the Toon Teen Girl is quite a bit shorter, and I've really exaggerated the head, hands, and feet. And I did that using a combination of the physique controls as well as the object mover controls, which allow you to individually scale things such as the thumb, forearm, or anything like that. Yeah, so this is what you would start out with, and then grab all of your proxy geometry and move it into ZBrush or something like that. So when you're happy with where all the controls and the physique shapes are, you can go ahead and click the deformation setup. Now if you're really happy with what you've got, I would for sure save a template. It allows you to go back if you make any mistakes, or if your entire project gets fouled up. But we're just going to go ahead and click deformation setup. Unreal really likes the T-Pose. I know a lot of people like the A-Pose, but it's going to create a, a rig pose for you. So click create rig pose, yes, save rig pose. Now here's an interesting option. It's going to ask if you want to weight your skin to the skeleton. If you have your own geometry already made and you've just moved the controls around to match your geometry, you're not going to need this option, but I think it's quite useful. So let's click yes. And now we're in the skinning menu. I'm not going to lie, I actually have not used the skinning menu here at all. It's relatively outdated and ng skin tools, which you'll likely be taught in class is a lot more useful. But this menu is pretty good in that it allows you to switch between your T-Pose and your A-Pose, depending on how you want to rig or model your character. So I won't linger too long here. I'm sure that these options are pretty useful if you are just learning skinning, but if you already know a skinning tool like NG Skin Tools or Maya's built-in skinning tools, these aren't going to be very useful for you. So let's go ahead and click Build Control Rig. We'll name it Toon. And we'll click Build. It's going to ask us to take a photo of our character. Not really much there by yet, but we'll take a quick photo. And since we're using student version, it's going to save two different files for us. So just yes, and continue, and continue, every time a student version thing pops up. Awesome. So that's created all of our files, and there are quite a few of them. The way that the art animation rigging tools work is that it makes an export file, which is just your bones and your geometry, and then it makes a rig file, which is all the controls and everything like that. So let's go ahead and click Edit Rig File. And here's what we have. So our character is in its T-Pose, and we've got all our proxy geometry here. And everything is nicely skinned. So this is a really great jumping off point for modelers that you already have some proxy geometry and now you can take it into the ZBrush or model in Maya and create a much more interesting and unique varied character. So let's discuss the export file and the rig file that Art makes. So now that we've made our character we can edit it. So we started off in the character rig creator screen but if we click edit existing character it's going to pop up with a couple examples of some of the characters I've already made as well as the one down here that we just made, Toon. The edit export file will allow you to adjust skin weights and bone placements. The edit rig file will allow you to edit the rig. So we've showed you the rig file 
and what it created for us there. So let's go back to edit export file. And it's taken us back to our skinning mint. So be very careful with these two files. You want to make sure that they don't get saved to anywhere different and that you don't accidentally overwrite them. They are very particular and I often make backups so that I can restore them if I do anything wrong. So in this menu is where you would control all the skinning and stuff like that. And then if you wanted to edit the rig, you wouldn't click build control rig once you've already built your controls. You would go art v1, edit existing character, tune, edit rig file. Perfect. So in here you can do interesting things like changing uh, the shapes of the rig controls or adding extra controls for different little bits. But with the really basic character that we have here, it's kind of hard to show you the tools that I'm talking about. So why don't we grab one of my characters that I've made. So we'll go edit existing character, and this is Starman. So let's edit his export file. Here we are. So you can see my character here, along with all the bones. These ones on his hips. I've had to add myself to control his little accessories that hang off his belt, and I've built an entirely separate bone structure for the gun that he carries in here, and skinned that as well. So everything is skinned in here, but it doesn't necessarily have controls. You don't want to make any sweeping changes, you just want to make sure that everything is skinned properly and such. So the way that you would go about skinning in this menu, you you can actually move and set keys as long as you delete them afterwards. Now let's check out the fully built rig character. Edit existing character, Starman, rig file. And here's the fully built character. You can see that he has controls on all his fingers his arms, and I have moved and rigged the gun that works with him as well, as well as some of the controls for the little accessories and such. We've even got controls for all his feet, and all the junk that you would need to get started animating. But you wouldn't do animating here. Your export files and your rig files are really just there so that you can reference into a new scene. So now that we have our rig and our export file, why don't I show you why this tool is so powerful. New scene, don't save, and let's bring in a character to animate with. So let's go to art v1, add character for animation. That's a character I built quite a long time ago, I don't know if it's actually on this computer, but let's add our tune character. Here is our character, referenced into the scene, with Epic's pretty hefty controls for animators. Now this is fantastic for really quickly picking the different parts that you want to animate with, including fingers, individual digits, center controls, and all that. And it even has controls under here such things as changing from FK to IK and all the lovely things you'd see off of a professionally built rig done in seconds with Epic's Art V1 tool. So let's change from FK to IK mode. And you're able to animate and switch between the two seamlessly. So this is a really fantastic plugin. I can't recommend it enough for people who are making characters but are not necessarily interested in becoming riggers. This is going to be an essential tool for getting your character up and running and into pose or animating if you're up to the challenge. 
Now it doesn't come with face controls, that you're probably going to have to talk to a real reader to actually get any help with that, but the Art V1 tool is an incredible tool to get you started with your characters. If you have any questions, I would definitely refer back to this YouTube playlist. It's got really great tutorials on the animation controls, the overview of the rig, and even the basics of how to install and update the plugin as it comes around. And that's it for me. Thank you very much. Bye.